<clears throat> Good. Now we're continuing in this beautiful speech that the Lubavitcher Rebbe made. And that the Lubavitcher Rebbe made, this is a continuation of what we've been learning now on uh, the idea of the Shemitah, Parshat Bahar. This idea of what exactly is the Shemitah. And these, these speeches were given in <clears throat> the, this one we're going to learn now, it was in, in 1956, just a couple of years after the Rebbe said. <clears throat> this is it's a short, we've been learning up to now, very good, hello. <clears throat> so just a short resume of what we've been learning up to now. <clears throat> and the Rebbe is, is a, he answers the question, why does the Torah, our Torah portion start off with this very sort of uh, strange statement that God said to the Jews on Mount Sinai, this is what God said to the Jews on Mount Sinai, six years you should work on the land, and the seventh year you should stop working on the land. That's what God said to the Jews on Mount Sinai. So the question is, well, that's all he said to Mount Sinai. And Mount Sinai, God said a lot of things to Mount Sinai. He said the whole Torah on Mount Sinai. What does it mean? That's what God said, only this law of the Shemitah. So the Rebbe said, no, the fact of the matter is the Shemitah, this year of the, the idea of letting the land rest on the seventh year, this really sort of encapsulates all of the whole point and the purpose of the Torah. Namely, to unify godliness and God with the world. That the world should remain a world. It should remain uh, a place where there's people and work and plants and, and, and houses and everything regular. But there should be pure God revealed in the world. And as we reveal in the world that there's a creator of the world and consequently all of the good of every creation becomes revealed a new type of harmony in the world that we could never dream of. And we see how tremendously important this physical world is to God and how every single person, how tremendously precious every human being is to God. And consequently, the more people, the better, because every person is different. Every person is, is unique. And the whole idea of, you know, Mashiach, ideally, that's the thing of the Mashiach, which should be revealed any moment now. If he comes right now, he's 2,000 years late. <clears throat> the whole idea of Mashiach is, is to reveal all the good potential in the world. The, 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 the whole world is an amazing symphony of harmony and miraculous unity and diversity of God, and that every detail of the world is precious, tremendously precious, to reveal the, 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 the wonder of diversity. And how everyone has an obligation to God, and also the ability to fulfill this obligation, to manifest his, his uniqueness, and to use it. And it could be in things we don't even aware of. It could be you know, a smile, just to somebody and saying good morning, that could be worth more than being the president of the United States. Being the president of the United States is not worth too much nowadays. But the, the president, of the United, or to, to, to invent, you know, the cure for who knows for for uh, all the diseases in the world could be. How could it be? Because let's say you you cure all the diseases in the world, so everybody's healthy. No, now what do you do with your health? Right? You can be healthy and not happy. There's people that are healthy like oxes. And they're rich and they everything and they're miserable. They're miserable. They're selfish. They're always looking at somebody else that has a little bit more money and think, how does he get the money? Why don't I get the money? <clears throat> right. So sometimes it could be just a smile is worth more. We don't know what God's how God measures things. But when we one thing we do know for sure is that it's according to the, the Torah. And that's the only thing of the of the Torah in Mount Sinai. That Mount Sinai 
is a mountain, egotism, highness, but on the other hand, it's the lowest of all the mountains, humility at the same time. And, uh, and this is the whole idea that we're that we're <clears throat> we're working for. That's what Mashiach will reveal in the whole world. When Deminion from Har Sinai, and this thing of Mount Sinai is Da Nachar. There's another teaching in addition to what I just said. A year a Jew, Darf Makayim Zayin mitzvahs, he has to do commandments, a mitzvah, Nitsuli Penius, not for any ulterior motive, not for any personal benefit. Nitsuli Gashmistika, Schar, Vieshtate, not for any physical reward. Even though the Torah promises us physical reward, we'll see next week's Torah portion. If it, God says, if you walk, if you go in my ways and my laws, I'll give all the physical things. I'll give the rain. Here means the rain. I'll give the rain in the proper time, and the world will be good. Well, that's a good reason to do the commandments. I right? do the commandments, right? You put your the mezuzah on your door, protect your house. Put the filling on your arm, protects your your body. That's pretty good. You give charity, the charity. God will give you a blessing. He'll give you more money back. Oh, that's good. I'll and I'll do it. It's, it becomes like an ATM machine. All of Judaism Torah, even though that there is reward. Remember, that's what we said with what's Antikonos Ben Soho, Ish Soho, that he said, don't be like servants that serve the master in order to receive reward. He didn't wasn't saying that there is no reward. There definitely is reward. The Torah promises us reward, but we shouldn't think about that. We should think about let God do what He wants to. Sometimes there's bigger rewards than physical rewards. Nitzuli bruchnius dikasei aschar from Gan Eden Doma, not for physical reward, not even for spiritual rewards. Nitafilut zulib zichuchanefesh are doing the commandments in order to refine your soul. All these things are true. The reason a Jew should do commandments and a Jew should learn the Torah <clears throat> is not for any benefit that he's going to, that will accrue for these things, from these things, even though there, is, there are benefits. It's not them segulos, the Zion and Da in the other mitzvah, which each mitzvah has a special charm, special, how do you say, positive power. Ois su leiturin the neshama. To refine the soul. A person who learns Torah, does the commandments, it refines the soul, right? That's a good reason to do Torah and this is right. It says, yeah, it's a reason, but it's not a good reason. What's the good reason? Nor men darf makayim the mitzvah, you should do the commandments. Balazoi is the Ratzon because that's what God wants. When we the Eistruk, like it says, Ilun it's Tavino, like the expression goes, if God would have commanded us to chop wood, we would have chopped wood also. But it happens to be that God commanded us to learn the Torah. We're talking about Jews. God commanded us to learn the Torah and do the commandments. As a fellow of men, Velt Uns, Hasten, Holt, Hakan, Holtz, even if God would have commanded us to just chop wood, which doesn't take very much intelligence, and doesn't take very much, how do you say, uh, not much satisfaction. You learn the Talmud, you get nice ideas in, a, in, a, in your mind, you feel you accomplished something, you chop wood, Okay, okay, maybe for a you know a simple person, a wood chopper or something, but for uh, you know most people are not good at chopping wood. If God would have said that's all you have to do, just chop wood all day, that's what we would do. An Indian in Velcha is is nita kain kabbalah schar. I think chopping wood, you don't get any reward for it, and you don't. There's nothing that's special about chopping wood. As Voltman is oich makayim gavan at the highest, we would do it because God is commanding us. We would do it, chopping wood. But that we would do that also. It's something, I mean, you can see this also in, in, in real, you know, day-to-day -day life, not in Judaism religion. A genuine, let's say, a genuine uh, politician, a genuine politician, right? People choose politicians because the politicians promise them that they're going to be honest, and they're going to be straightforward, and they're going to work for your benefit, and they're going to only think about you. And, it's a, and, you know, that's what they're supposed to do. A doctor. A doctor, he's working for you because he has these, what they call it altruistic, these, these, and you say true goals. He only thinks about you being healthy. If you can pay or not, it's a side thing, what's not important. 
The main thing is, of course, he wants the money. Right? A, a lawyer, he only wants the truth to come out. A judge, right? he almost wants that there should be justice in the world. That's what it's supposed to be. Does it really come out that way? In fact, sometimes, sometimes it does. But one second, what about getting paid? What about getting all the reward? What about getting your picture put in the paper? What about all the fame? When you come into the room, it says, this is Dr. Gross, right? This is Judge Gross. Oh, he gets a big feeling. There's all the side benefits. It says a true person, a true judge, a true doctor, a true politician, but right? he's not doing it for the glory. He's doing it only because he wants truth. Only because he wants the benefit of the people. <clears throat> So that's the same thing. Why should we learn Torah, do the commandments? Why? Only for the truth. This is what God wants. Right? God wants people to be healthy. So the doctor wants health. Health is a good thing. Who says health is a good thing? God says. Who says justice is good? Who says truth is good? God says it is. So it could be maybe the doctor, they don't know about this. But the idea is that the Jewish people were chosen to tell the world, show the world that it's possible to live a life and do everything that you do only for the sake of truth, only for the sake of justice. And let God take care of the world. He's doing a pretty good job. You know, if we wouldn't mess it up, he's creating everybody. He's enlivening everybody. There's what, 9 billion people in the world? He's providing for 9 billion people, right? It's pretty good. I mean, I think we can leave some other things up to him. When a person does a commandment, to leave Segulas for any sort of benefit, or because of some sort of, of a reward, is this be'emes geret a seder from achitzom? This is what we call a how do you say a an external person. A, we also also called klipa. It's a person that he lives his whole life for himself. Achitzom is not ibrugi given so in a line. A person is what's called a external selfish. A selfish person, he can never really devote himself truly to anything that he's doing. When he does something, he's thinking about something else. A penimi, a true, a true person, an inner person, a soul person. Like it says from Kavit Kodesh's more the Rebbe, the fifth Rebbe of Chabad, there was tuindik an Indian is er in Gansen in the minion. When a person is doing something, he's totally involved in it. Nitrachnik, not thinking about any other things when he's doing it, says that's what's called a genuine soul person and, and in, a, a genuine person, an in, internal person. You find this a lot of times, there's people you, that, that they're just genuine. You go to a auto mechanic, right? Auto mechanic. All he wants is just your car should work, right? You go to some auto mechanics and they check the car. Oh, your brakes have to be fixed. You don't, brakes don't have to be fixed, right? Oh, your brakes have to be fixed. And the starter, we can see that it's not working together with the distributor and this. It only costs you $2,000. All he really has to do is just turn one bolt, right? And he gets, right? There's people that are true and they're not. They, 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 as somebody showed me, they have <clears throat> uh, television programs in America where they purposely send a technician to, some, to someone's house. I'm sorry, no. They, they put a, um, they, they call up a technician and the person says, listen, there's something wrong with my, my air conditioner. Can you fix it? So 10 different technicians come to fix it. And only one of them says, listen, my friend, all you have to do is just turn this little bolt over here. And right, there's some technicians that they even say, listen, just the fact that I'm going to come to your house, it's going to cost you $50 because it's gas and things like that. So, I mean, are you real willing to, Yes, you come, they come to the you come to you fifty dollars, and then they'll come and they'll tell you the truth and <clears throat> what it is. There's others there, there was a lot of them said, Oh, the propeller on the Grimble is off, and it's you can only get it from China, and it'll take you, but I can get it for you quick, half price, five hundred dollars, right? And really all you had to do is just turn one little. There's some people that they're interested <clears throat> in things working properly, in truth. And there's some people that they think about themselves. Says a person that thinks about himself is that's not a, what we call a genuine person. That's the whole point of what we're learning over here in the Torah portion. Why? How does that fix anything? How, how, how was this hinted at? Well, thus is the Horah. This is what's talking about that the Torah was given on Mount Sinai. Why? 
because like we said before, Haben the Andra Barg says that the other mountains, Gehat and Zich Emesatinus. It says over there, there's a Midrash that says that the three other mountains jumped in, two other mountains jumped in, and they said, hey, God, give us the Torah, give the Torah on us. <coughs> one said, give the Torah on me because I'm the highest of the mountains. One said, give the Torah on me for one other type of a reason. This is where there's going to be a big miracle with, with, uh, with Elijah the prophet, right, and then Mount Carmel. And God said, you got, both of you have good claims, good claims, good claims. Vibalta with the Torah, because the Torah has to have truth. When these other mountains came to God and showed how great they are, when Tainan, and they said, because of my greatness, Zolman given, you should give the Torah on me. And they really were great. The mountains did have Mount Tabor, it says, was the highest of the mountains in Israel, and Mount and, uh, and Mount uh, Carmel said it also had its good qualities. There was a big miracle that happened there. Hey, what am I doing? What am I doing? I'm pressing the wrong button. One minute, one minute, everything's going to be here. We go. Ah, this is what I wanted. <clears throat> Is Nid no, it's not only so all these other mountains they had their claims why the Torah should be given on them. And, and of course, you might, might say, What are you talking about? The mountains talk? What are you talking about? Talk? So the fact that it is, it's that surprisingly, everything that there is in the world has a soul. And there's even a book. Of, of a, 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 a composition, if you want to call it, it's called Perik Shira. Perik Shira. Some people say that King David wrote it, some people King Solomon wrote it, Perik Shira. And it talks about all the different types of creations in the world, and each one has, <clears throat> has a song. Has a song. The frog has a song, the sky has a song, the clouds have a song, the mountains have a song, the river has a song. Everything has a song to it. It says that the the, the, the stars and the planets, each one of them has its own song. And that's its movement in the heavens. So all these, the Rambam, the Maimonides said that each planet has a soul, that they're really, really sort of like angels, the planets. Okay, in any case, the, the Midrash says that each one of these mountains has a claim. It says, there's a, we learned about this before, that the letters of the Hebrew alphabet, the letters came to God and said, create the world with me. So it's a midrash, but there's also Otyot to Rabbi Akiva. The, right, the, the letter, they started from the end. The letter Tuff said, create the world with me because I, I am the, the, the last of the letters and I'm the completion and the and last letter of Emmet or whatever it is. I forget exactly what it is. And the letter Shin said this and the letter, uh, the, the, the race said this, etc. And God said, no, I can't create the world with you because you are, you, you, you are also, Tuff is also the word for in, in, in death mate and shin is sheker and that, that's uh, reasons why so the letters have uh, intelligence and the mount and then, so the mountains also have so it says the mountains came to god and they said give the torah on me mount tabor said i have this quality good quality the, the Rev. mount carmel said i have another quality said but the fact that they all came and they were blowing their own trumpets and setting their good qualities is this is <clears throat> not a reason why the Torah, it's not a good enough reason, but exactly the opposite. The fact that they were advertising their own greatness and goodness, this is a reason not to give the Torah in them. Well, Torah, because the essence of the Torah is, can only be given in a place where was as mission zich nit arayin, kain zayin kain because the Torah is to be given in a mountain that's just a mountain. That's all. Not a big mountain, not a special mountain, not a miracle mountain, just what it is. Torah, Sulib, Torah line. Just like the Torah, the Torah is for the sake of the Torah alone. And therefore, therefore, Hatman Gigevin, the Torah, therefore, the Torah was given on Mount Sinai. Hagam Oichar Sinai, even though the Mount Sinai is also a good quality from a mountain, 
Aliyah said, Domem, raising up of the physical, Vibalt of her butt, because the Maila in is an in nid kentic, because the highness of the mountain of Sinai is not so noticeable. It's the lowest of the mountains. So it's a low mountain. So the fact that it's a mountain is not so, doesn't stick out so much, <clears throat> but it is a mountain, in fact. So therefore, is is Herenzich nit an kein zaitikinyanin. Therefore, you don't see anything else. God wanted to give the Torah on a mountain, but a mountain that's only pure mountain, not a high mountain, not a special mountain, not a miraculous mountain. That's the whole thing. We have to be what we are. The, the problem is we don't know what we are. We don't know what we are, but we have to be positive. A person that's positive and doesn't see the negative things in life, a person that's positive and every moment is, is new and he feels that every moment is a gift. So then he's, he's, he wants to say something good to people. He wants to be good to people. He doesn't. <laughs> Yesterday, I saw two people meeting each other. There's a guy, anyway, this guy is not a, a very sort of a normal person. <laughs> anyway, so somebody said to him, walked by him and said, hey, how are you? And he said back to him, wow, you look terrible. You look awful today. <laughs> What do you have to say something like that for to a person? Oh, you look awful today. Well, you look really bad. Right? There's some people that they, they enjoy saying bad things. They want how do you say they want others to feel the same bad? Misery loves company, like they say. Misery loves company. On the other hand, if you're miserable and you're feeling why, because it could be that the reason that you're miserable is because you want other people to feel miserable. It doesn't, it's not your misery causes other people. In other words, you look at the world with a left eye, so you want everybody, you think everybody else is bad, that makes you feel bad also. And then you want, it's, it's a, this, it's a, a, a circle, a never-ending circle. The, the fact of the matter is we have to look at ourselves, basically what we are, we're creations. We're creations of God. And God has given us a tremendously complicated nervous system and, and circulatory system and everything. He's giving us eyes to see, and there's all these amazing miracles that God is making with us. And so we should at least be a little bit appreciative and we should understand that the world doesn't belong to us and that we don't belong to ourselves. And that God puts us here to be positive, to be positive and to thank God a little bit more and to be aware of God a little bit more and to a little bit more honest with other people. And then not just a little bit more, but much more. And there's be who we are. Appreciate what we've got. I heard someone said that if you if you would thank God for what we've got, we wouldn't have time to complain about what we don't have. When therefore, so therefore, the Torah was given on Mount Sinai, even though that Mount Sinai has has the quality of a mountain, and a mountain is an elevation of physical the bald butt, because the, this quality is not so recognizable, it's the lowest. So therefore, you can't see anything else except for pure mountain. Darmit, there with this. Vetmen oich farshteh. We can also understand what it says in the Midrash. As that, Har Sinai Mount, Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel, it says it came from Aspania. Mount Carmel jumped over from some other place, from Spain. Har Tavur came from Ilim. I don't know, Ilim is whatever, the Italy or someone. When Har Sinai came from Haramiriya, says that Har Sinai, Mount Sinai, that came from, that was the same mountain as Haramoria. Now, what was Haramoria? Haramoria was the place where Abraham took <coughs> Yitzchak to sacrifice him, what's called the Akedah, which that's the basis of Judaism. And that was the same place where the Holy Temple was built. The Holy Temple was built also on Haramoria. And it says also the Rambam brings all sorts of other things. That's where Adam built his first altar. Adam and Noah also built his first altar, it says. They both, and that the world was made, it says man was made from the dirt from that place. That's Haramoria. Haramoria. So now we can understand why Mount Sinai is connected with Mount Haramoria, with the, the place where a Abraham took Yitzchak to sacrifices and where Har Maria, where the Holy Temple is. 
<clears throat> Why does the Midrash have to tell us where it came from? Haram Maria, its thing is Akedis Yitzchak. The main thing of the Haram Maria, this was where Abraham took his son Yitzchak to sacrifice him. Now this is the basis of Judaism. We could talk about this for a long time, but it, this is probably the strangest story ever told. Abraham taking his son Yitzchak, to say, if there's anything that's the diametric opposite of everything that Judaism stands for, seemingly, it's this story of Abraham sacrificing his son Yitzchak. Right? Judaism stands for life. Judaism stands, <coughs> the message of Judaism is the preciousness of life, the preciousness of every moment. <clears throat> The, 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 the importance of being kind, the importance of being good, especially being good to others. Like Rabbi Akiva said, love your neighbor as yourself. That's the, that's the foundation of the Torah. You do the Torah because it brings blessing to the world. It brings good to the world. It brings peace to the world. And here we have the whole of Judaism is based on Abraham taking his son, his own son. And his son was so promising. It was the whole future of Judaism, the whole future of the world. Because we say the whole world depends on, on Judaism, on Torah, on the, on the commandments. And here Yitzchak was the only one that really got the message of Abraham. Abraham had another son, Yishmael, that totally did not get the message. And Yitzchak got the message of what Judaism is and self-sacrifice and, and all the amazing things. And God said to Ab Abraham, now take your son and kill him. And Abraham said, oh, no problem. And he took him to Mount uh, Moriah, took him three days, went to Mount, and he wanted to, he was going to kill his son. He wanted to kill his son. He had an altar over there. He had fire. He was going to kill him and offer him up as a sacrifice. Can you imagine? And this is the essence of Judaism. How could this, it seems to be very cruel, very cold and, 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 and barbaric. And, and not only that, it's, 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 it's what do you call self-destructive. It's the opposite of, of any sort of, of, of benefit. No one's, who's going to get a benefit from it? No one, right? It's, 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 so, uh, it's self-defeating. Abraham, in order to do God's will, is he's going to destroy the whole future of Judaism, of doing God's will. What's the, what's the point of this story? He says, no, this is the story that the, all of Judaism is built on. There was even, I heard, that they made in America, uh, Chabad <clears throat> wants always to, to influence Jews to be more Jewish, or, to, or do, at least to, to be Jewish, to act Jewish. And uh, they made this uh, the, the sort of summer program for non-religious kids, and they made the Siddur translated into English very short. And the Rebbe has said, if it's possible to put in the story of the Akeda of Yitzchak there, right? they have a few blessings and nice pictures. And all of a sudden in the middle here, this, this story about Abraham taking his son to kill him. What are you telling little kids this? Little children that they're not religious. What type of a message is it trying to bring? That you should have children, you should kill them all. And that's Mahar Maria, that's the mountain. This is such a special mountain that this is where the Torah was given because that's the whole message of the Torah is the, is the fulfillment of this sacrificing of Yitzchak. Akedah means the binding, the binding, the, the tying up Yitzchak to bring him to sacrifice. So the answer is, is that, well, let's see. Mesirut nefesh tzalib mekayim zayin der ebesh means throwing away all of your calculations and all of your ideas and all of your plans in order to do what God wants. Trust in God. If God told Abraham, take your son and kill him, God knows what he's talking about. He knows what he's talking about. This is going to be for the best. How is this for the best? How does it make, it doesn't make any sense. Exactly, that's exactly the point. Sometimes what God says is the best is not what we think is the best. And even more, Mixing in what we think is best in doing God's will detracts from the genuineness of doing God's will. Even when we're doing things that are beneficial and we're speaking and we're making like this, the, this the, uh, 
summer program for non-religious kids and we're bringing them all together and we're going to show them a good time and how wonderful Judaism is, how happy Judaism is and how positive and loving and now you're going to be real friends and we're going to this and all of a sudden you stick in the middle of this thing that the founder of Judaism took his son to kill him. That's not logical. The Rebbe said that's the whole point of Judaism. The whole point of Judaism is what God wants is the best. And that's what you think about, what God wants, not what you want. Ideally, you should want what God wants, because God really does want the best for us. And in the end, we see that it came out okay. <laughs> Abraham did not kill Yitzchak. And Judaism is founded on the willingness to do what God wants, even though we're going to lose everything. Everything. Right? A person builds up a Chabad house, whatever he's got, he's popular. All of a sudden, you have to talk about Mashiach. Wait, I'm going to lose everything. I can't do it. No. If it's the truth, then you have to do it. If it's not the truth, then don't do it. But if it's the truth, as soon as Abraham knew this was God speaking to me, and he did it. Right? If he would have thought, maybe it's not, maybe it's how I'm hallucinating it. As kain as zaita kazak, you have to, when you do the Torah, it has to be without any ulterior motives, not, no, nothing on the side. Mitzad cheshbon is not any sort of of calculations or reckoning or your ideas with seichel intelligence is da chakira un shakla vataria darin darin no matter what type you're not doing it because of the logic that's there you're doing it varum the inyan akeda the whole thing of the akeda sacrificing Yitzchak hot hot ir gehat mipia anavi gehert mipia anavi avram avinu we heard this from Abraham, right? God told Abraham, sacrifice your son. Now the question is, is good. God told Abraham, what about Yitzchak? God did not tell Yitzchak. Why did Yitzchak go along with it? Because, <coughs> <coughs> because he heard from his father. His father was a prophet. And his father, God spoke to him. He knew it was true. Not only that, Abraham, it says in the Tanya, that it's not so much that Abraham did what God said, but he did it with what God said with happiness. With Zurizu Samara al al Simcha, he did this with tremendous help. On Shofech Dama Adam, it says even by Noah, which was way before Abraham, right? Not that far, but it was before Abraham. But what four hundred years something before Abraham? It says by by Noah, it was uh, given the commandment: you're not allowed to kill people. That's one of the seven Noahid commandments. By Abraham, it was forbidden. That's why that's why Cain got 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 punished when he killed it. Uh, Hevel, the brother Abel, because it was forbidden to kill. It was one of the seven Noahide commands that even Abraham, Abraham, uh, uh, th that God gave Adam. Abraham was not allowed to kill his son, but because God said, it says, if you kill somebody, you're going to get killed. Or is given at This is a commandment which everybody knew came from God, which even the sons of Noah knew. If so, why did Abraham take his son Yitzhak to kill him? And why is this the basis of Judaism? Nor Vesendik, when a person knows as a Zoy is them Abishters Ratzon, that this is what God wants. Is there Nita Ryan in Kain Cheshbonos? He doesn't make any Cheshbonos. Of course, you have to, you know, to check out to see if you're schizophrenic. Sometimes people get all sorts of messages. All the religions of the world are based on people that got false messages. So you have to be sure that you're getting the true messages. But once it's true, and you know that the Torah is the truth. It's the only truth. Once you know something that says in the Torah, then you have to do it without side. You have to be sure that what you're doing is right. But you have to do it without any self, uh, how do you say, with, without any selfishness. There is given, Abraham given, Lagamrit, Sumratzon, Elion, the person is totally devoted to the will of God in a penimius and an inside way, over Messias Nefesh. That's the whole idea of Mount Sinai. It's the same mountain where Abraham sacrificed Yitzchak. It's total self-sacrifice and harmony with the creator of the universe because the creator of the universe always wants what's best and he's giving us everything. So we owe him everything. A dust is a kli to Torah. This is the whole idea of the Torah and that makes everything work perfectly. That makes everything, the world, the way God wants. And that's the whole idea of Mashiach. Mashiach is going to bring all the Jews back to Torah and the commandments. 
and doing the Torah and the commandments in a way that God wants, namely doing it only because God wants and being aware of it. That's what we learned in the Mimer, that before you do anything, you have to Shabbat Lashem. You have to, first thing you do is sit and think about what is God? What am I? Am I really a creation? What does God want? <coughs> and then a person can come to love God. And then everything that he does is in a whole totally different way. Life flows more easily. <coughs> you don't, everything, you, everything doesn't depend on me. It's not this pressure cooker in the world. Somebody makes me mad. I can say, listen, that's what I think. What is, let's see what God thinks. Some of the things makes me depressed. That's, that's what I think. But what does God think? Right? God is creating me. It must be positive. Let's get on the, on the train of positivity. But the main thing here, the Rebbe is saying, the Torah, the commandments, this is the key to doing things in a non-selfish way. To doing things in a, how do you call it? In a, in a not uh, anxious way. Right? It's anxiety. People are anxious because they think, and then they become anxious about their anxiety. L open up to the creator of the universe. Don't be so selfish. That's the idea of the Torah and the commandments. And that's why the Torah was given on Mount Sinai. That's the whole message of the Shemitah year of, of Moses and of Judaism, and especially of Mashiach, that will make the whole world a place where the essence of good and God, and life, and meaning, and blessing is revealed. Have a good day with Mashiach now. God willing, tomorrow, today's Thursday, tomorrow we're going to start learning about Lagba Omer. Lagba Omer is next week, and we'll uh, learn about this. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Now let's do the Yom Yom. We're having a class today also at 3 o'clock, so be with us. We'll learn the Haftor of today. <clears throat> okay, these are just corrections in the Siddur. In the Siddur, so it's not really relevant to us. Corrections in the prayer book, how things should be punctuated, how they should be written. Have a good day with Mashiach. Now hope to see you at 3 o'clock. Shalom, Uvracha.